Have you ever felt the discomfort of unlearning something? Yeah. Yeah? I think I've had a lifetime of unlearning things. Well, this morning is your turn. So here we go. If you know anything about King Solomon in the historic story of Israel's background, what is he famous for? What is he known for? Just any thoughts? Yes? Wisdom. Yeah. Anything else? Be pardon? Proverbs. Proverbs, yes. Yes, Mac? Many wives. Lots of women. Where, where does wisdom and lots of wives connect? It, it doesn't. That's where Ecclesiastes comes in, is it? All the, yeah, it's all meaningless. Yeah. Okay. So according to 1 Kings chapter 3, there's a night when Solomon has this dream. And in this dream, God asks him a question. And the question is this, what do you want? Ask and I'll give it to you. That, that's the question. What would you have asked for? If, if your need was finance, maybe the house being paid off would be a good idea. If the need was a relational breakdown in a family with family members or something, maybe that's what you'd ask for, or physical healing, a life partner. Like, what would you ask for? What did Solomon ask for? Wisdom. That's what I would have said until this week. And I have had to unlearn something because Solomon never asked for wisdom. The Bible narrative does not say that. In fact, if you look in your own Bibles, in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, he does not ask for wisdom, even though the NIV heads that chapter with, Solomon asks for wisdom, he did not ask for wisdom. I've looked up 35 different English translations of the Bible, and most of them say that he asked God for a heart that could understand, a mind that could understand. Other translations like the NIV say that he asked God for a discerning heart. Other translations say a listening heart. And if you're thinking, so what? It's the same thing. Well, it actually isn't. And words matter. The word that Solomon used, the Hebrew word he used, is the word shomar or shomar. And it means to, he's asking God for the capacity to hear, to, to be able to listen so that he can actually understand what he's hearing. That's what he was asking for. And God is so pleased with, with what Solomon asks for. In verse 12, he says, hey, boy, you've, you've asked for understanding. I'm going to upsize the order. I'm going to give you understanding, but, but I'm going to add to that, I'm going to give you wisdom as well. And in verse 13, he goes, riches and honour, more than anyone in, in your lifetime would experience. Solomon asked for understanding, and in some ways, understanding is greater than wisdom, because without understanding you can't have wisdom wisdom is applying understanding he never asked for understanding so you have imagine this you have I'll start off this way that's knowledge understanding wisdom wisdom be pun 
Oh, yeah. It just clicked. Yes. So, so wisdom in that sequence is the last thing we experience. This might help. Imagine you don't have a really good mechanical knowledge. For some of you, that's not hard to imagine. I'm in that category. But you have bought yourself a new car. And with this new car, all you do is every now and then take it in for a service and they look after all the bits and pieces. You just put petrol in it. But one day, you have an accident in this car. Now, it's not your fault. Like, most car accidents are never our fault. It's funny, when you're at school and you have a fight with someone, when you tell the story, you were the one that won. But when it comes to car accidents, it's the other person's fault. And so your car now is in being fixed for a number of weeks. But you've got holidays coming and you want to go to Adelaide, visit South Australia. And so a really good friend of yours offers you a loan of their car. Now, it's not a new car, but it's in really good order, but it's 20 years old. And they say to you, take our car, it, it, it's working really well, but, but I do need you to check the oil, the oil, <laughs> the oil and the water. Don't mix those two together like I just did. The, the oil, the oil and the, and the water together I want you to check both those things. And you say, well, I've never done that. And they say, well, I'll show you how. And they show you. Now you have knowledge. But then you do something else. You go, why do I need to do this? And they explain that it's starting to use a bit of water. It's burning a bit of oil. And if you don't do this, and it runs out of water, you're going to cook the thing, or if it runs out of oil, you're going to seize it up. So now you have knowledge, and now you have understanding, and you would be an idiot not to do it. You'd be a fool. See, wisdom now that you have those things, when it's applied, you're going to check it on your trip so nothing goes wrong. Words matter. And Solomon asked God for shorma, understanding. And God says, I'm going to give you understanding. I'm going to give you wisdom. But when the word that, Jesus, that God used when he says, I'm going to give you understanding, is not the same word. It's translated understanding, but it's not the same Hebrew word. He asked for shorma, and God says, I'm going to give you beni. It's, it's understanding that's turbocharged. It's, it's understanding where you have God teaching you. It's, it's a knowledge that has understanding on top of it. So you're getting information, but you, you are able to understand it because God is teaching you. And that's what God said. He would give him discernment. He would teach him. And the word for wisdom is a word that includes moral understanding, moral wisdom, spiritual insight, spiritual wisdom. Inside your phones, you may not realise this, but there are little men. And if you go to Google or have a little chat with Siri or speak into your little thing, there are these little men that will run all around the world to find you the information and the knowledge you want, in just like that. Knowledge is everywhere. It's so accessible. But see, knowledge is not necessarily understanding. But if you have, if you have a desire, I mean a really strong desperateness to gain understanding and then apply that into your world you'll gain wisdom. And God wants to give that to us. He says, if you, if you lack, ask. Now, the Bible writers, please don't be offended. This is not my idea. 
But the Bible writers describe people as three types of people, three groups of people in all humanity. There are evil people. They're the scammers. <laughs> they're the ones that want to be a friend request on Facebook when they're not your friend. You already have that person. And they're wanting to take something from you and they don't care about you, they just care about them. They're evil people. And then there are fools and then there are wise people. Now is the moment out there in the tech room, can you put up my photo, please, that we had a little preview before. My question is, is this a wise man or a foolish man? See, he has, he has the knowledge, he has the knowledge that there's a wheel missing. He has this understanding of what that could cause. But I would say he's a wise man because he has discovered that a good wife <laughs> brings balance to your life. So I think he's a wise man and he picked a really decent, solid woman for the job. <laughs> so... That's my bit for this morning. You can have knowledge, but not understanding. And that's why, why Solomon asked for understanding, because he knew he would need it if he was going to lead people well. And that if he could have understanding, he would gain wisdom. But that was just in the natural. God upsized it into the spiritual as well. So where are we going all with all this? Well, since 1600, there have been 11 ships that have been named the HMS Discovery. And we're going on an adventure together, a discovery, and we're going we're gonna to go somewhere over the next few weeks into greater understanding of the hidden things of God. These are precious things and we're going to discover things that we have never seen before. Why does God hide himself? If there really is a loving God, why doesn't he just make himself so clearly visible that a rational, any rational person would have no doubt that God is real. Why does he hide himself? The prophet Isaiah, when he's bragging on God in Isaiah 45 verse 15, he's bragging on God. And this is what he says about the God he's bragging on. He says, truly you are a God who hides himself. See, without understanding, that doesn't make sense. That is not necessarily the thing that you try to tell someone far from God that God's hidden. <laughs> and so we're going to have a look at some of these things, not today, but that's part of what's coming after the camp that won't be rained out on, according to my wife with great faith. <laughs> Understanding is a powerful gift you give yourself and you give others. Now, I mentioned this last week. There are times in church life you do not look at the person next to you. This is one of those moments. So here's my question. Do you know any... Jeanette, Philip, eyes to the front, eyes to the front. Do you know anyone in your world that gets frustrated when things do not work. Don't look at each other. Just, you're doing well, Philip. You're doing really well. Do you know anyone like that? Me. You. <laughs> yeah. You're allowed to dob yourself in, right? I'm taking my granddaughter up to Angus Vale just to check out the campsite the other night, and she's putting a torch together. It's her torch. Batteries are dead. I give her new batteries. She puts them in. It doesn't work. She's getting frustrated. Granddad with understanding shows her how that when you put the batteries in the right way, torch works. 
See, understanding doesn't just smash frustration in you before it gets going. It helps you with other people. It helps their frustration. Understanding is such a gift. And I want, to, I want to take us to a place this morning where Jesus talks about understanding and the hidden things of God. He calls them the secrets of the kingdom of heaven and explains why it's possible to hear and be given information but not to understand. And I think the important thing about it is that Jesus is actually showing us what qualifies us or what sort of positions us to be able to understand. Understand about a culture, a kingdom that's not of this world and yet it's something that every human heart is searching for. So in Matthew chapter 13, a crowd's gathered and Jesus is at the centre of the crowd and in verse 3, Matthew tells us that Jesus, it says, and then he told them many things in parables. What, what's a parable? Someone help me out. What's a parable? Yep, Mark? Be pun? A story with a message. Great. It's just a short story. And within the story is hidden truth so that the person who hears the story can discover that truth when they are ready or when their mind is not closed to that truth. And it's memorable because it is something we can relate to and it's a little bit like a joke sometimes in the parables because there's a bit of a twist at the end and you go oh that caught me it's so memorable that I can a, a couple of years ago our grandson Zeke we just sit in the lounge room and he starts we're talking about some of the stories Jesus told and he, he retold the story of the of the prodigal son and he got all the elements the brother in it the whole st- and and so when he retold this as a 10 year old In that story that's locked in here are the spiritual truths hidden in the story and he carries them with him all his life. It's the purpose in a parable, and don't miss this, is not to tell the truth. It's to hide the truth. I discovered growing up that I could not change my dad's mind by coming at it front on. I got a little devious. I would drop a seed, a little thought, and then I'd just step back. And Dad would pick it up and think it was his idea. And when he thought it was his idea, he would run with it and he would make it happen. He had no idea I was setting him up. And that's what God does with the truth that he hides in parables. See, when it comes to spiritual things, nothing is really yours until you discover it for yourself. I learned something from a friend of mine. He, had, he was one of four brothers. And he came to a place where he had a belief and a trust in Jesus. And he wanted his brothers to experience this same thing that he had. They were violent men far from God. And he took one of his brothers fishing one day. And they're trying to catch trout in a little mountain stream. And just and his brother says to him, hey. And he asked him a God question. And my mate answered that God question with as little words as he could but with as much understanding as his brother could handle. And then he shut up, never said another thing. What happens sometimes for us as Christians when you so want to share something with someone and they ask the first question, we dump 
all the stuff that we know on them. And that's not helpful. So this day he just answered the first question and then closed his mouth. And then his brother, hey, hey John, asked him another question. All weekend, just every now and then, asked. that's how his brother came to understand for himself, discover for himself. See, we can overload people. We can chuck all the information at people you like. It will not change someone until they discover it for themselves. It doesn't matter how much you know unless you actually understand. And understanding is where it begins to change, where there's a benefit for you and for others. So in this Matthew chapter 13, we hit verse 10, and that's when the disciples come to Jesus and they ask him this question that says, why do you speak to the people in parables? It's a great question. I think it's funny when we hear the word disciples because we, we think it's a religious word, but it's not. It's an academic word and it simply means student. It's someone who wants to learn and watch this. The root word behind all that is to understand. And so these men come to Jesus who want to understand. And their thought behind it was, Jesus, you're a great teacher. Why don't you just tell them the truth? Give them the truth. Hit them with the truth, Jesus. I grew up in a church culture where the really hardcore Christians, the really on fire for Jesus Christians, did a thing called street witnessing. And they went down the street. I know people that would have a prayer meeting together and then they'd go down the street and they would street witness and they would tell people about Jesus whether they wanted to hear it or not. And as as Aussies, we really do not like people busting into our space when we're down the street or someone knocking on our door who's a stranger because people, when they knock on your door, who's a stranger, either want your money, your time, or to change your beliefs, or all three of them, right? Jesus never did that. Jesus never did that. He didn't. People came to him, and they came to him because he met needs. He, he fed them. He, he healed them, and he communicated with them in interesting ways. He told stories that they could relate to, and they enjoyed them. Please hear what I'm about to say. He didn't preach Jesus to them. He didn't tell them that dirty, rotten, mongrel sinners going to hell. He spoke to them about a kingdom and a culture that would satisfy their deepest longings. And then he said to them, you can access this now. This is for now. It's not for one day when you die. That's the basis of most religions is what you're longing for one day. One day. Jesus didn't come to bring a religion. He came to establish a culture to bring a kingdom to earth. And this is Jesus' response to his students, to those who wanted to learn. Why he used stories to communicate with the crowds. And he says this, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Who is you? Who is you? It's those that want to understand. You is you. (laughs) You is you. you. You're here this morning You could have been so many places. Charity, you wanted to be here. They stole my ute to go and pick you up this morning because you wanted to be here, right? That's a hungry heart. 
That is someone that longs for more than where your life is now. Right? Yeah. You is you. You aren't the crowd. For those online, you want something more. You are searching for something. You might be just curious. But we want something more. And so that desire to know more, to hunger, qualifies us. And God wants to reveal the hidden things that will give us understanding. In God's kingdom, the teacher doesn't determine the lesson. The student does. Your capacity to grow and learn is not dependent upon God. It's dependent upon your hunger. Charity, we love you. Mark, you drove from Adelaide to be here because there's a longing for more. You mightn't understand it yet. You're struggling with things you don't understand. You have to unlearn some stuff. That mongrel hypocrite, ex-boss, put stuff in your head that you've got to unlearn. But in the unlearning, God's going to give you understanding. And that's going to be, you'll discover the secret things of God. That hunger. Don't lose the hunger. Feed the hunger. See, Jesus himself in Matthew 5, he, he, he told something to us that you, some of you could, could tell me what it is. And it's blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be filled, satisfied, more than satisfied. And in the next chapter, Jesus, at the end of chapter 6, he unveils a hidden treasure. And it's so far removed from the way our Aussie culture works that even Christians just dismiss it and overlook it and don't understand the power in it. And the reason they don't understand that the hidden treasure at the end of chapter 6 of Matthew is because we don't understand the parable of the pearl. Jesus told a story of a, of a pearl that was so precious that when the person who collected pearls, who was a merchant in pearls, who understood and he had all, found all sorts of other pearls, when he found this pearl that was so amazing, sold everything. For one, for one. And so at the end of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, seek first <laughs> his kingdom, the righteousness, the right relationship with the king, and all the other things will seek you. You don't have to chase for them. Find Find the pearl. Find, find what is so precious. You'll, you'll be so desperate, nothing else will satisfy. I'll close with this thought. I have understood the information in that statement Jesus made since I was young. But I'm only just starting to appreciate the value in it when I apply it to my own life. That's my last thought. <laughs> but I want to finish with this. Many preachers will begin with a Bible verse and then they'll end with an inspirational story. I want to finish 
with a Bible verse that is Solomon's story. It's his words. It's what God showed him and taught him and gave him the insight and understanding over. And so this is Solomon's story, and I want to read it to you. It's Solomon speaking to us because God showed him something. Tune your ear to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasure, like a a pearl of such amazing value. Then you'll understand what it means to fear God, to have a, a reverence for God. And you'll gain knowledge. And that's not information. That word, it means to be taught by God himself. For the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. And for those online, because you have stayed with us so long, I have a bonus for you. And for those in the room, I have a bonus for you. Anne-Marie and Jason, come out here for the front. Come out here. It's about a year ago you guys walked in here for the first time You'd never been to a church before, but you, but you were looking. There was a searching within you, right? Kind of. Kind of. Okay, tell me what. <laughs> tell me what you what was happening in your world then. Um, I wasn't a very nice human. I was a very angry person, and I think um, this was my only option. Okay. <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah, you. Oh, that's that helps. <laughs> that helps. Yes. Yeah. And so. Why did you stay? So I stayed because Lex was preaching, telling a story. I can't remember his name, but um, that's why I stayed because of that story. That story, yes, yes. yeah. It's a story. It's a story of Tom Varney, who was a Bansdale boy who burnt police cars and did lots of naughty things. Ended up being thrown into jail forever but eventually was given a state pardon because Jesus had changed his life so much. And that story resonated with you, Jason? Yep. Yes, it most certainly did. It did, right? What have you discovered since that first day you stepped in here? We baptised you both. And our daughter. And your daughter, yep, Shana. Yes. Now, what have you discovered, Jason, that, you didn't know when you started this journey with God. What has surprised you? What is something that you've learned that's precious to you now that wasn't a year ago? Uh, healing power. Healing power, yeah, yep. Most definitely. So what do you mean by that? Um, being fulfilled of, uh, let's say, the Holy Spirit. Um, it helps heal me from week to week. Um, helps me be a better person. I can walk into this place on a Sunday and feel absolutely miserable. Um, aggressive, angry, um, don't want to cooperate with anyone. But by the time I leave, I feel happy, I'm smiling, I'm back to being a normal person again. Yes. So I experience healing power within this church. That is, isn't that amazing? They're, they're the hidden things. Because when you walked in here, if I remember correctly that day, what you'd done is you, you walked in here expecting to, to leave. Yeah, I wasn't going to stay. You weren't going to stay. And the reason you didn't leave is because you couldn't. There was just that sense that you just needed to stay, right? Yeah. So, Anne-Marie, what have you... What, is a, what are some of the precious things now that you've discovered that you had no clue of a year ago? What's something that's precious to you that God's shown you? He's healed me of my pain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which I didn't think was possible. Huh. That's that's very powerful. Yeah. Cuz we all have a story. You don't all know Anne Marie and Jason's stories, but it's a very rich story with lots of color. 
right? In fact, you have lots of colour on you, (laughs) right? And for God to bring that healing is very powerful. In in the coming weeks, I want to come back to Matthew when Jesus is explaining about the parables and he's talking about people that don't hear and can't understand. And he says, but if they did... If they did, the bottom line is, and and at the end of the verse it says, and I would heal them. Through stepping into God's world, not church world, but but in this relationship with God, healing Mm -hmm. is what you've found. Jason, what has been precious to you that that you've found in this journey? Um, The better family lifestyle. Yes. Um, it's brought my family closer together. It's given us a bigger family too. Um, you're all here. Yes. Um, but for my daughter, it's brought even more stability. To my wife, it's brought even more love. And for me, it's brought a happy family. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and the truth is, right, because we, we've been honest and transparent here, <laughs> I've probably seen you in the last 12 months at moments at your lowest. Yes. Right? Yeah. And yet, in amongst all the... Ups and downs of the last 12 months, right, mm. you're still here. Yeah, most definitely. And you're growing, both of you, yeah. right? And God's doing stuff in your life. And it's so precious. It, it's just precious. So I just thank God for this family, right? I love it when you serve the tour you serve in the kitchen there, right? I never know if you're going to have eyes that look at me in black and white pictures <laughs> or what you're going to look like, right? You're... A, She's so creative, right? I'm not for normal consumption. You're not for normal <laughs> consumption. <laughs> See, Jason, you and I look like normal blokes, I but we're, so. we're both married to extremely amazing women. Definitely. Yes, yes. 